Okay, I'm making a set of front doors for a house that's being renovated. I'm um, getting on with making the door frame first. So starting with the door sill, I have to create a five degree slope of the sill uh, towards the outside of the house. So I've got my table saw set to five degrees and it's cutting as deep as I can get it to cut. Uh, and then I've got to work out how to finish the rest of that cut after this. You can see I have to increase the cut up to where the chisel point is. So first thing is I'll snap off this piece of waste and then work out what I'm going to do next. So by adding a piece of scrap melamine to the sill I can use that as a guide and use a router bit to finish the rest of that cut. Seemed to work pretty pretty good actually. I needed to add a little bit of width to the sill so I can glue on about another 25 mil or so to the front edge. Typically horns are often cut by builders on site, uh, but I was able to do it beforehand before we actually got to site because I, I knew exactly what was going to happen, I knew where the cladding was going to be, so I got the horns cut and then I could make the little rebates here for the jam to come down and sit onto the sill. With the main frame glued up, I could then add some full width door stops, which really beef up the size of the jam but also make it look really nice. Um, I'll take this opportunity to say that if you see any really weird, large, curvy wall in the background of some of the shots, um, that is a giant set of curved stairs which I will be working on in an upcoming video. Anyhow, back on to a basic mortise and tenon frame for the door. This is out of cedar. With the frame finished, it can get clear coated. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, oil based polyurethane. Now, I've got this one really large oak plank which I was able to get almost all of the veneer from for the door fronts. So, I'm going to start milling that up while I'm waiting for the uh, door frames to dry. So first thing I had to do was cut eight strips which would be the styles of the doors or at least look like it and then the rest of the plank was cut up into just a whole bunch of strips of about 40-45mm wide
pieces. With the door frames being dry, I can create a fairly large rebate in one side of each door that is going to take a plywood panel and this is that plywood panel just rounding over the corners here to fit into that rebate in the door frame and that is glued and pinned in uh, on one side of the door The other side of that same door gets a whole bunch of glue and another really square piece of ply and that is screwed down to the first piece of ply creating a nice stable solid core of the door. I guess I should mention here as well that the cedar is all either quarter or rift sawn so movement is going to be very minimal and that's why I've, I've gone to uh, chosen to use cedar in this job as well. It's Right, and a whole bunch of these oak strips going through the sander, getting it all down to uh, three millimeters. And also prepping the door blanks themselves, so I bogged up any screw holes, divots, dents and whatnot, and just giving them a good once over, and creating a two millimeter bevel on the two sides of the doors that open to each other just so I can get uh, weatherproofing in there and so the doors won't bind on each other when they're opening. Now the fun part creating all the little chevron pieces that will go together to create the main panels of the doors. This was about the, the best way I could figure to do this. Uh, I know I'm close to the blade but I know what I'm doing. And all these pieces came out really even. I mean I really didn't have to trim any of them um, even though I had to cut almost a thousand of them. Um, they all came out almost exactly the same, so that was really good. It's important when cutting lots of multiple sized pieces like this that you mix them all up and just get rid of any grain continuation and color variants and just really separate it all out. Um, it creates a much more even color tone pattern at, uh, when the whole thing is finished. I had no real clue how to actually go about doing this. Uh, I eventually settled into a pretty good rhythm of uh, just dipping the piece itself into some glue and pushing it up to the next, uh, the next available position. It worked well. The first strip here took me about two and a bit hours and the last strip took me about 25 minutes so I definitely learnt what I was doing as I was doing it. So this is a front and back of one door and I need to now join the edges so I can lay them out in one big panel. So I had to create a couple of uh, templates or jigs here just to hold all the pieces so I could trim them on the panel saw.
Okay, so we're using a cold press PVA glue. Um, this is a kind of glue up that you really want an extra pair of hands with. So once we've got the glue spread out on the two veneered panels, you can drop the door blank itself onto the veneer, flip it over onto the other veneer and get it in the vacuum bag press. Now my vacuum pump is slightly undersized for jobs this size, but it, it worked. Um, but yeah, probably could do with one a bit bigger. Now we're not so much caressing the plastic bag here as just making sure in all the veneers are laying down flat and where they should be and they haven't popped up on top of each other. After some uh, pretty normal cleanup processes, I could get on to getting the hinges mounted. While I've added regular rubber gaskets around the door, the most important one is under on the bottom edge of the door. So I found this awesome piece of hardware which just slots into the bottom and as the door shuts against the jam it presses this little black button which forces the rubber down onto the jam. As soon as you open the door, it pops back up and gets out of the way. Right, with a bit of sanding done, I could uh, kind of push in, massage in the first coat of polyurethane. And while that was drying, I could get on to making the architraves for the doors. And I decided to try and have a fixing free approach to the architraves. So we ended up using the Lamello Clamex. Uh, system which ended up working really well so completely hidden fasteners on the architraves and it looks really nice I rigged up this little system which lets us finish both sides of the door at the same time. Uh, it worked out really well and it's a really good time saver. So this method of applying the finish I learned from Andrew Pitts on YouTube. You can search him up uh, years, years ago. Uh, it works really well and I used to finish a lot of my furniture this way. So it's a hand rubbed polyurethane, so it's a, a thinned down 50-50 polyurethane and um, terps uh, or mineral spirits wait for it to dry for a while and then wipe off the excess. Essentially it's like a, a wipe on poly. Um, it makes a really good finish. In this case we ended up doing the final coat with uh, like a, a speed brush applicator which you'll see in a second which I found gave just a slightly better finish than what I was getting um, this particular time.
Okay, we're on site now and I managed to get a little bit of footage here. So first thing we had to do is get the, obviously get the frame in the hole and then we're just using some packers to pack it up level off the concrete floor. And we've decided to apply or install the outside architraves first and that way we can use the Clamex clamp and that hole that you use to tighten them down is hidden inside the wall cavity so we don't have any extra holes in the door jam. So the three architraves go on and then we slide it into the hole. So even though I'd given myself a few millimetre tolerance with the width of the door jam, the way that the plasterboard had been applied on the inside uh, was not great. So the plasterboard wasn't sitting as flat as it should be. You can see here that probably three to five mil in places where the, the plasterboard sticking past where the jam should be. So I rebate the back of the architrave and that all goes on really beautifully. And after that, the last real thing to do is add the expanding foam around the door and then put the internal architraves on. And that's about it. Now there is going to be another one of those black vertical handles on the left hand door so if you spot any holes in the doors that's what that's for. Alright everyone thanks for watching that's it for this one and I'll see you as soon as I can with a crazy set of curved stairs. See ya.